Hello, my name is Frank and welcome to my YouTube channel. To keep things short and simple, um, I studied in Edinburgh, I did my HND in horticulture, and now I am starting uh, at an incubator farm in France. Uh, we're doing a market garden, predominantly vegetables, but some fruits, mostly strawberries and melons. And I want to take you through the process of how we build it and run it. Welcome. This is the house that we are staying in. The tractor we got to use. Exercise station. This is our neighbour, Jean-Michel's house. This is where he does his little potager. And this is our little seed start area. So things are starting to hot up. Well underway, it's March the 20th. So we've got a lot of stuff going, a lot of lettuce, broad beans, alliums, sunflowers, tomatoes. Got our first tomato come up today. Where is he, the little fella? There he is. There he is. <sighs> Good-o. Come on, Duke. Come on. This is Duke. Nothing but trouble. Yeah? So our fertility is going to be based around using worms, worm castings. So I built a nice compost, worm composter. And we can get the leachate from the bottom. And around compost teas. Excuse the mess, the shop is an absolute mess at the moment. So compost teas, made some biochar. You can see the process of that a little bit on Instagram. And using compost teas as folio displays, folio applications. It's not a bad work site, the view is pretty incredible. However, it is a bit of a slope. That's a bit of a nightmare, we found that out already. So here, got some fruit trees that are dying. I need to prune them back to see what's alive. Planted here. Some clover paths. It's not quite germinated yet, it's getting there. Uh, some cassis. What is that in English again? Black currants which will get us plenty of leaves for making tea, so we might do some tea blends. Got a strawberry patch up there, needs to be weeded out. And I might do a couple more strawberry patches here. Or strawberries and melons, maybe. We'll see. I'm getting a, getting everything together still. So as it stands, we have a couple blocks laid out over here. And the idea is to have some more blocks running in tandem across this field, getting thinner and thinner until they get to the polytunnel because we want to leave road access by the hedge because you can come in from this way and around. And then there'll be some more beds along here. And then obviously we have the polytunnel. This is the pump house. So we've got ourselves Walking tractor belongs to our uh, tutor in essence. It sort of helps us, lends us stuff and helps us out. We've got a wheel hoe, which is also his, which is actually an awesome piece of kit. I never used one before, but it's great. This is the pump, a bit of a beast. And we got irrigation, overhead, sort of wobbler style. And these things apparently can give a 12 meter radius, 12 meter radius when that's all going. So we're gonna get that set up sooner or later. So here we have the holding pond, which is around about 40 meters cubed. And that's obviously the pump house there and that's where it's pumped directly into field. It's got an overflow. It's filled up through either uh, spring up the way or by paying for you know county water 
So as I said, March the 20th, so not much in the ground for now, but if we come down this way, it's our first area where we've actually got things going. This was a bit compacted, so we went over it with the rototiller, wheel hoed it, got all the weeds out. Had some interest from some creatures, I'm not sure which. Um, we didn't really have any hoops, so we've actually been getting some hazel uh, coppicing. We're doing some hazel, hazel coppicing to make these hoops. So I'm bending them for now and then we're shaping them down to one and a half meters in length. Using the edges. Minus six, minus five this morning. Broad beans are settling in. So, seeing as we can't use cardboard because this land is organic certified, we are going to use straw. Now I've heard lots of people's objections with straw is the fact that the weeds can just simply come through and I appreciate that. But we're running a little experiment here, but I don't really have much choice. So I've got to use what I've got. And so far, so good. But I mean, this is not a particularly weedy patch. Obviously it's already been pre-weeded. But I mean, it, the straw's breaking down, water's penetrating. Seems good. So we've got a bunch of straw on the way. And we have 40 tons of compost coming. So the idea will be dump everything here, lay out our beds. Well, I'll show you what we're not going to lay them out. I was watching a video or listening to a, a podcast or a video, or whatever I should say, with Richard Perkins and the rooftop, the cork rooftop garden. And I saw them mention using a essentially a frame. So that's sort of what I've mocked up here. I'm going for the standard 30 inch wide beds, 75, 80 centimeters. And we're gonna go for about seven centimeters depth. Oop. Well, that's not very good. I'll have to fix that up. Anyway, so this is what I knocked together. And the idea is you just fill it up, reset it, fill it up, reset it, fill it up, reset it up. So we'll lay down, well, First we've got a tool called an Actisol. It's a bit hard to explain exactly what it is because to be honest, some things are lost in translation. But it's a form of subsoiler and surface tilfer, all in one, I believe. So that's gonna be run along here in less than a week. So this is all gonna be changed into open ground because uh, at the moment it's a lot, I mean, it's a lot of clover. There was a lot of cover crop sown. So then that's gonna be run over, it's gonna be nice and smooth. We're gonna mark everywhere out, loosely, use the jig, lay down a thick mat of straw on top. Uh, maybe wait for that to settle, we'll see how fluffy it seems, water it in. And then we're gonna get it 40, 40 tons of compost, and it's gonna be wheelbarrowed into this jig, that's gonna be flipped so forth, until we've gone from there, all the way down to here. Should have some nice flower beds next to the poly tunnel and everything else up to the end. And if I've still got the energy in time, I might sow some vetch and some rye at the top end and potentially some potatoes, but we'll see, we'll see. So here we have the large tunnel. It's actually quite big, 30 meters by seven meters, so definitely the biggest one I've messed around with. Got some salad starts, actually doing quite well because it's been freezing at the moment, so they're actually, I'm surprised how well they survived. Knock together a little cold frame. We have a fleece on the side of it to give it extra protection. So we've got five, well, four major rows and two smaller ones. I mean, the edge is barely anything, but I mean, it's enough to squeeze some salad crops in here. This side is decent. So we're going to get the shorter growing things like aubergines and chili plants on that side. And I'm going to try and squeeze in some ginger as well. We're seeing how that's going to go. Then we're going to have at least three with tomatoes and one with cucumbers, cucumbers either here or in here to break it up. I'm not sure, but I'm worried about the height on this, but I've got some indeterminate, uh, some determinate tomatoes as well, some bush types, but we might experiment them outside as well. Uh, yeah, so overhead irrigation for now. There will be drip as well. 
And these sides come up apparently, but I'm not really sure how that works. Ah yeah, and there were a bunch of strawberries along here. As you can see, we've started to repot them up. And they're looking fantastic, and those are the ones that are going to be going up the top, so that's nice. So for us, this works uh, kind of as what they call a test. We have access to this land for a uh, minimum of one year, maximum of three years. And there are some challenges. The slope is a major challenge. For us as well, um, it's kind of a curse and a blessing, is the isolation. It's, it's quite far from we're about 45, 50 minutes either way to the next major city, which gives it uh, some difficulty selling. And it's quite a uh, low population rural areas. So we are trying to figure out ways to sell stuff. We're not sure how to do it yet. We might have to hit a few markets, but we're possibly we're gonna try and do a Rico ring scheme or something of that, of that type. So thank you for watching my first post. Uh, if this is something that would interest anybody to keep track of, please let me know by leaving a nice comment or a thumbs up. Thanks. Cheers.